Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I'm creating my spin on a black forest cake. Yum. Yum. To make this cake, I baked three eight inch round ultimate chocolate cakes. It's already good. <laughs> Cut each cake into two layers. Six layers of chocolate cake. Already sounding good. Even better. <laughs> I really think that cherries are the star of Black Forest cake. So for this cake, I have made a sour cherry simple syrup. Oh, nice. Even better. <laughs> I found sour cherry juice, and then I just altered my traditional simple syrup recipe and used juice rather than water. And it was spectacular. Place some footage of the sour cherry simple syrup being showered onto the six layers of chocolate cake with Sir Squeeze, and we'll just have a moment of silence. So good. <laughs> Thank you. I wanna have all my ingredients lined up and ready to go so I can assemble this cake. In my version, instead of whipped cream, I will be using Italian meringue buttercream and some ganache and chocolate butter. I'm also filling this cake with some cherry jam, and we want jam, not jelly. We want bits of cherry in it, and of course, fresh cherries that I'm gonna cut. So I lay the first layer of cake down on a cake board, and I need to pipe a fence. I'm actually gonna use a piping tip for both my chocolate ganache and my Italian meringue buttercream. Pipe a ring of Italian meringue buttercream right up against that ganache fence, and then another inner ring of Italian meringue buttercream. One of the number one questions I get, do you actually like cake? Do you actually eat cake? The answer is yes. And it goes way back. Aww. That is a Black Forest cake. <laughs> I'm wearing a lot of frills. See that? Now I use a piping bag once again for my cherry jam, but I don't put a piping tip on it. And then pipe that jam between the two Italian meringue buttercream rings. So pipe some jam and then a spot right in the middle. It's like a jam bullseye. Last but absolutely not least, we're going to line up our quartered fresh cherries on top of the jam. So I lay them all in, like sort of fan them around the ring on top of the cherry jam and between the buttercream. See this? I'm laying cherries. And then we're ready to add another layer of cake. I use a small spatula to just clean up that ganache fence if it's oozing out, but this is the great thing about ganache. If it's the perfect consistency, it will already sort of start to hold up and really hold the weight of the cake layer that's on top. I'm gonna repeat that filling process, not one, not two, not three, but four more times. It's like torture right now. It smelt so good. I know, yeah. We need smell-o-vision or YouTube smell. Smelly tube. No, that doesn't, that's smell. not what we should call it. I just wish that through YouTube, you could smell these cakes. These are some of my favorite flavors. It's so delicious, but there's a lot more deliciousness happening over on How to Cake It Step by Step. Joni is back with a brand new cake. This week, she's made a beautiful tiered cake with painted buttercream flowers. It's a super cool technique that you all have to check out. Head over there now to watch, and you can also find the link in the description below. The cakes on Step by Step are getting really delicious. Mm -hmm. It's double the deliciousness. Yeah. Oh, look! All my layers are on now. Perfect. So now it's time to crumb coat this cake with chocolate Swiss meringue butter. That's different than chocolate butter cake? Yeah, it's a different technique. It debuted in the cake book. And can we just talk about this photo? I wish this book was scratch and sniff. Imagine, do you remember that? Oh, do you remember that? Yes, that would be awesome. It just smells like book pages. I love but if it could smell, smell like, you like book page I smell? I love it. I actually smell books, like I go to the store to smell books. Oh, in the store! <laughs> That's not weird. That's how you decide which book you want to buy. No, no, <laughs> right? Okay, let me see. I need a little help, guys. If you like the way books smell, leave the hashtag book smell below. Um, I don't know, I could be surprised. Everybody liked your fries and milkshake, so. Yeah. 
Once my crumb coat is chilled, I ice this cake again in more chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. It doesn't have to be perfectly iced because we're gonna apply a technique to the outside of this cake that's so delicious. Having the right spatula is really important whatever you're doing with cake and I have a bunch of spatulas over at howtocakeit.com. On sale! On sale! My spatulas aren't the only thing on sale right now at howtocakeit.com. You can also find Yo's Kitchen Essentials. It includes their squeeze, finale, circle cutters, spatulas, and more. Click here to get yours. I'm gonna be decorating this cake with yummy chocolate bark all around the outside to make it look like a tree trunk. And then I'm gonna be placing some little pretzel chocolate trees on top and filling it up like a forest. To make my trees, I'm using pretzel rods, both thick and thin, and some green compound chocolate. I lay my pretzel rods onto cookie sheets lined with a silicone mat. And then I place my melted green compound chocolate into parchment piping bags, cut the tip, and I just drizzle by zigzagging over the pretzel rods. You don't wanna go all the way down, you wanna have some pretzel exposed, that's what you'll push down into the cake, but just drizzle. So I made one tray of the skinny trees and one tree of the thicker trees. And then what I wanna do is lighten some of my green compound chocolate. I melted some yellow and some white, added it in for a lighter shade of green. It's a forest, it needs to be like lush and dense. And then I made more trees, one tray of each with this lighter green compound chocolate. You wanna allow these trees to set. If it's really hot where you are, you can put them in the fridge for like 10 minutes. Just help that chocolate set up. Share this video with someone who you would wanna live in this forest with. This button, it says share. It's that easy. Now I'm ready to make my bark. I lay down a sheet of parchment paper, unfold the top, and then I scoop some dark chocolate on and use my offset spatulas to spread it nice and thin over the parchment paper. Then I take some of those chocolate cookie crumbs and sprinkle it on top. Oh, that's what it was on it. Yeah. Yes. Found these cookies, but threw them into my food processor and ground them up. Because I want to try and have a little bit of texture in my chocolate bark. Now I fold the parchment paper over top, smooth it out, and then what I'm going to do is, from the folded side, roll it all up. Just roll it all up and place it on a cookie sheet and put it in the fridge to chill. I'm going to do this four times. Once my chocolate parchment rolls are completely chilled, I unravel them. Yes, you're gonna hear the chocolate breaking, but that's what you wanna hear. We're gonna have nice shards of all different sizes of this chocolate bark. And to apply the bark, just pick up the pieces and simply glue them to the side of your cake. You don't wanna intentionally leave spaces between bark, so use as many pieces as you can, and it just becomes like, a puzzle that fits together any way you want it to. We're gonna make our way all the way around the cake. If you find you've run out of big pieces of chocolate, just unravel another piece of parchment and use those pieces until you've completely covered the cake. Why is it called the Black Forest? It's a forest in Germany. It's called the Black Forest. It's really dark. You might like it there. I probably would. Yeah. Is it haunted? I don't think so, but maybe it is. Walking through this chocolatey, dense forest has made me really hot. So next week I'm gonna cake something to help cool me down. Nice. Do you know what it is? Leave your guests below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. The cake is completely covered and now I just wanna address the few little pockets of space I can see between the chocolate. To do this, I melt a little bit of milk compound chocolate. I place it in a parchment piping bag, and wherever there's a space, I pipe a little line, and then I use a dry brush to brush it on. This will give it texture. It is gonna set up really fast because your cake and your chocolate bark is cold. So you just want it to have a natural looking rough texture. We're almost there. <laughs> I'm going to top this cake with some chocolate shavings. I simply scoop it in, spread it around all on the top surface. Before I place my trees on, I wanted to create like kind of a little trail. So for this I used cocoa nibs and I just sprinkled them on in like a little sort of S pattern on the top of my cake. 
Time to add my pretzel trees. It's a good idea to use like a sculpting tool to poke a hole down into the cake first. We don't wanna break our tree trunks, they're just pretzels. So poke a hole in the cake first and insert your trees down. I had them all like lined up against each other. Like it was a dense forest with a trail going between. I wanna shrink and run through this forest. That would be so much fun, right? I yeah, eat eating. Someone? I would not be afraid of that forest. No. That is some outdoor life for me. <laughs> and now, this is for Cody. I'm gonna add a little campfire <laughs> at the front. I am. Um, I found these really cool chocolates that look like stones. I made a little fire pit circle or oh, on. Sweet. Yeah, then I used some like chunks of chocolate as logs, place that in the center. And then Cody suggested I take some like broken pieces of the thicker pretzel and lay them beside like, you know, I guess people sit on logs yeah. near a fire. And then I cut some flames out of wafer paper, just with scissors, and I used some food coloring markers to color them in and make them look like flames, and I placed them down like fire. I need somebody to help me devour this cake. Who's with me? Me! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look how happy Orhan and I are to be outdoors this week. Yeah. See that? <laughs> it's my time. kind of outdoors. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to check out Joni's Painted Buttercream Flowers Cake and I will see you next week. And those of you that are joining us at Camp Cake, I can't wait for the weekend. I will see you there.